start with uh, John Williams and his comments about the balance sheet being a very quote unquote boring process, right? That it's going to be quite orderly. And I'm curious to know what you take, what you uh, make of that, because obviously all of us here in the U.S. still remember the taper tantrum of 2013. Do the conditions look like we're going to avoid something like that again? Uh, I don't think we're going to have anything like that uh, again. That was a communications problem, not a problem with the actual policy. If you recall what happened in 2013, uh, when we actually did the taper in December of 2013, markets didn't react very much. So I think uh, if we communicate effectively, and I agree with John's comments that this is baby steps, uh, that the uh, runoff in the balance sheet will go very smoothly. It's going to be managed, it's going to be slow, mm -hmm. uh, and it will, it will take quite a while. Jim, you have mentioned that the key rate is closer to the appropriate level. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, does it mean the Fed can actually raise less than is projected now because you have the second dial and another option here of unwinding the balance sheet? Uh, yeah, I think a good thing about unwinding the balance sheet is that it will create policy space for the committee in the future if we need it. And uh, on the rate itself, I think that we're not very far from an appropriate rate for the U.S. economy that will keep inflation not too far from target and the labor market uh, performing well. Uh, so what I disagree with is the idea that we have to go 200 basis points higher in order to get to some sort of neutral rate. I don't think that that's the environment that we're in. Uh, I think we can stay about where we are, possibly just a little bit higher than where we are today. Jim, I just have to follow up, though, on this question about the markets taking balance sheet reduction in stride. Uh, no, we know there are no details yet about where the caps will be set on, on how much can be rolled off every month. J.P. Morgan is saying, oh, they think it's going to be $12 billion to start. Bank of, Bank of America Merrill Lynch is saying $5 billion. But the bottom line is the market doesn't have a blueprint for this. Neither do you. There's going to be a big source of demand removed from the situation because the Fed has been buying so many bonds to replace the ones that are rolling off. I get that it's going to be predictable. I get that it's going to be fully communicated. I just wonder why everyone is so sanguine that this will just be like no big deal to the bond market. Yeah, I just don't think uh, I, the numbers are not big enough to really have a, a very large impact. There'll be some impact, but it'll be relatively small. And to the extent there would be uh, months where there would be a lot of roll off, uh, we'll put some caps on that to keep that under control. So there'll be a sort of maximum that uh, markets would face in any uh, particular month. The exact details uh, uh, are up to the chair. We'll, we'll let her uh, make the call on that in conjunction with the markets desk in New York. Uh, you know, Jim, I want to get back, though, to the uh, issue of rate hikes, right? Is it one or is it two this year? And I know you're more on the former uh, than the latter. And, and I want to bring up this chart for our viewers. I'm not sure if in this Tokyo studio there you can see this as well. But uh, it basically uh, shows what, you know, what Kathleen's been talking about, what we've been hearing over and over again, which is, you know, we've got a hot jobs market, but our inflation numbers, you know, seem to be cooling, whether you're looking at PCE or CPI or core CPI. So I'm kind of curious, Jim, you know, why you think, uh, you know, why is it that, that you are the outlier here among the Fed speakers that we've seen? I mean, you know, we hear from John Williams and others who echo uh, what seems to be more of the consensus, which is two more hikes this year. So what do you see that they don't? Yeah, I think those inflation numbers have been uh, a little bit surprising so far in 2017. You can see those in that chart that uh, they're all down on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, we've been arguing that we're making progress toward our 2% inflation goal, but, uh, but these have been going in the opposite direction in the early months of 2017. I also think uh, in the first quarter we got a relatively weak uh, GDP report. It was revised up a little bit, but even with that revision, I think the first half of 2017 will be relatively uh, uh, ordinary. Uh, GDP growth of around 2 percent. So the, the idea that the economy is growing a lot faster than trend and this is going to push up inflation, I don't think is matching up with uh, the numbers that we're actually seeing. 
And furthermore, uh, inflation expectations uh, actually started to decline after our March uh, rate increase, and that's an important variable uh, to keep track of as well in this discussion. Uh, Jim, you know, your, the uh, speech you gave, you talked about uh, the fact that inflation has been missing the target uh, for five years now, and that it's about four and a half percent below yeah. where it would have been other th otherwise. Um, we have a chart we threw together. It's not exactly like the chart you included in your speech. It's uh, hashtag 8948. And it basically shows volatility and inflation, the core, the headline, going back to 1995 through 2012. Uh, is the Fed at risk? Uh, being blamed for missing the inflation target, for not letting the economy grow fast enough because it's been missing that target so badly the last five years when the economy's in recovery, it's past the Great Recession, and the Fed's talking about more and more rate hikes. Yeah, I, I did put this price level chart in my speech. Uh, the, uh, the trend I like to look at is the 1995 to 2012 uh, trend in the U.S., uh, I like to start in 1995 because that's about the time where the consensus formed that we would target 2% inflation. And uh, as of 2012, when I originally used that chart, uh, we were actually right on the price level path, and that gave me confidence that we had pursued a pretty good policy. And of course, right after I gave that, the, pr the price level started to fall off the, uh, the path, and in the last five years, uh, we've drifted lower uh, because inflation hasn't met our 2 for per percent target and now uh, the price level is almost five percent off the the price level path so if you think that price level uh, targeting is optimal monetary policy which is what a lot of theory tells us uh, you know it doesn't look as good today as it did in in uh, when I first started talking about it in 2012 so uh, it made me a little bit concerned that uh, a little bit worrisome that we're off that path are, is there a uh, risk? Jim, I just want to quickly follow up. What ahead. is the risk of not of, of of not getting back on path? What is the the risk of, of raising rates so much? Are you saying the Fed could help tumble us over into another recession? What is the Fed playing with here? Is it fire, or is it just something they should be thinking about, or you should be thinking about? Well, I mean, if you're price level targeting, you would like to get that price level back on the path, which would mean inflation would run a little bit above two percent for a while. Uh, to offset the period where you ran below. And, you know, people on the committee have talked around this in, in speeches in various ways. Uh, but, uh, you know, this goes on for five years and it starts to add up. It's, it's one thing if it's a couple quarters and then uh, you have some quarters above target, but this is quite a while uh, below. I myself was expecting that with all our uh, firepower that we would be able to hit the inflation target sooner than we have and that we'd uh, possibly overshoot for a while. Uh, so far that hasn't happened. So now that we're in a tightening cycle, uh, you know, we're, you know, the concern would be that you push the price level even further below the price level path and that, that would not be uh, the best policy. Uh, but Jim, you know, when it comes to the firepower, we're not really seeing that reflected in financial conditions. In fact, since the last rate hike we saw uh, in March, as well as the one in December, we've actually seen conditions ease. Uh, we throw up a chart there uh, to show you. I mean, we've seen the dollar is weakened, stocks continue to rise at record levels, and the international outlook is looking a little bit better, too, when you have worries of potential economic and political shocks out of China. Europe seems to have receded now. So can the Fed still do more this year? You know, I think you have to be careful and your viewers have to be careful about interpreting these financial conditions indexes. So the, uh, the equity markets are up a lot in the U.S. since the uh, election. My interpretation is that a lot of that is uh, in anticipation of corporate tax uh, changes and possibly personal tax changes that are afoot in the U.S. And, you know, all by themselves, those tax changes would revalue the U.S. corporate sector on the order of 10 to 15 percent, which is about what has happened since the election. And uh, because of that, I think uh, the rise in equity prices can't be interpreted uh, quite the way it would be in other times when the market might foresee faster growth in the U.S. or, or other factors. Uh, on the dollar, uh, the thing about the dollar is you've al al always got the question of what the other central banks are doing and uh, and in you know 
and what was priced into markets previously. And so in the current environment, the dollar has weakened a little bit uh, compared to uh, uh, the, you know, because of the uh, changes in perceptions of policies of other central banks in tandem with U.S. monetary policy. Uh, you know, and it's also weakened, perhaps, uh, Jim, as well, with uh, more worries about what's going on in Washington. And, Jim, I want to pull up another chart here that just tells you what's on Americans' minds, right? Consumer confidence. Uh, those numbers, interestingly, continue to go up, uh, not bringing spending along, though. Spending uh, clearly on a divergent path from confidence. But nonetheless, Jim, uh, consumer confidence remains high. But I'm curious if you think that that uh, is on shaky ground, if we see more... Uh, chaos out of Washington, more distractions for Tre President Trump. Do you think that eventually, uh, if we see more of this, that the Fed's going to have to consider that impact on confidence, not just consumer confidence, but business confidence? Yeah, I think uh, the business confidence numbers shot up after the election. Uh, the, the president was perceived as more pro-business than the previous administration. Um, you know, Washington does have to deliver at some point, and and I think that is a, a concern going forward. Whether the uh, the the honeymoon period would end at some point, and and uh, maybe the reality of of American mm -hmm. politics would would settle in, uh, we'll see if that that happens or not. Uh, I think the jury's still out uh, on on all that. Hey, Jim, I just want to ask you quickly about unemployment, the Phillips curve. You know, wages really have not accelerated very much. You have another chart, hashtag 189, that shows what unemployment's gone down and wages uh, have not accelerated very much. In fact, they seem to have topped and pulled back down again. Is the Fed uh, looking for something that isn't happening? Is this another concern? If wages don't rise, how can you justify being worried about inflation or continuing to raise rates and and remove stimulus. Yeah, I think the wage increases are very consistent with a trend growth story of 2%, which is the one I've been telling. You only have half a percent increase in labor productivity in the U.S. over the last several years uh, annually. And so uh, half a percent plus a 2% inflation target would give you 2.5% on compensation. Those are the kinds of numbers that we're seeing. So the way I like to interpret things is that we're growing at 2 percent. Wages are growing in a way that's consistent with that. And inflation's a little bit below target. Uh, but th that trend growth rate is not going to be enough to um, push inflation higher. And so we have to be very careful in this environment with our policy, not get out in front of ourselves in, uh, in our uh, Right. our attempts to normalize U.S. monetary policy.